Que lo que hay, mi gente. Welcome back to Two Drinks in a Ting. My name is Natalia. My name's Lauren. And we in this bitch. So before we begin, a brief introduction. This is my friend Lauren. We met at Starbucks. Yes. Your girl worked at Starbucks for nine years and I met Natalia as a customer. She, We met like literally when we were little babies, like 20, 21. 20, 20, yeah. Yeah. In college. Yep. And now we're old crusties. <laughs> Out here <laughs> thriving. <laughs> but yeah, this is my bitch. Before we begin, what is two drinks? Fuck, I always mess this up. What is a ting without two drinks? God damn it. <laughs> I've drank before, as we all know. And we have the Rose Sangria. Cheers. Brought to you by Marshalls. <laughs> it is delicious as fuck. Y'all need to get on it. It's really good. Uh-huh. Like this one. And these cups, look how cute they are. Dollar Tree. We love it. We do. Okay. Silence. RIP. Jerry Springer. My childhood. Just <sighs> devastated. I'm sad. It's just like literally this just is- Just devastated. When I found out, I was like, first of all, I didn't know he had cancer. He had cancer? He had cancer. Oh. <gasps> He had cancer. Yeah. He was 79 though. That's a really long life. He did live a he lived a long life. He had a great career. Amazing career. You know he used to be a mayor? Jerry Springer was a mayor. Did some shady shit and you that's know, how he stopped being a mayor. You know, I've always wondered what the fuck he did in order yep. to get Jerry Springer. Yeah, he was a mayor. News flash, guys. He was the mayor of Cincinnati in I was 1977. Right. <gasps> Natalia, I was right. You really were, but he only held it for Two a years. Year, a year. You know, he started getting into some stuff with like, I think prostitution or something like that. And he was. What a fitting job he fucking yeah, had then. That's why he took his job. <gasps> Damn, his wife must have been a loyal. The fuck? Yeah. No, I don't think he oh. was doing prostitutes. I think he just got into like selling <laughs> I don't know. It's, so he was tied to prostitution. If that you I know. know. I watched a documentary in, about it. If you, if you know, put it in the comments below. What documentary? It, okay, so it was like a documentary about like um, TV sitcoms in the nineties. <gasps> I have to look it up, and yes. it was really good. It talked about like how they impacted society. Because mm-hmm. like, it was him, Ricky Lake, Ricky Lake, Oprah. Ricky Lake was. Ricky Lake was. I heard she was problematic. She but was in a so good way. problematic. She was. People were like being outed though, being gay on Ricky Lake. <gasps> like seriously, she outed people. She outed people. Yeah, that was in that uh, documentary that I watched. What? You, what is this documentary called? I literally will have to get back to you. Well, we'll put it on the screen. Yeah, we'll put it on the screen. It. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, I think I watched it on Hulu, so I'll just have to tell you what Ooh, it is. Hulu is stepping up their shit. Yes, they're coming out. Mm-hmm. Along with um, Netflix is kind of shit at the current moment, but I don't know if you're gonna want to watch this. Have you ever? Do you have Netflix? Yeah, of course. Have you ever um, seen a title called The Snow Girl? No. It is so good. So it's a foreign film, but it's dumb in English. It's Spanish. It's from like Spain. And a little girl goes missing. Um, the investigator on that case, she's not even with like the actual police. She's a news reporter. Right. And this um, limited series is within a nine year span um, because the little girl goes missing and Every three years of her anniversary, the kidnapper releases a tape that the girl is still alive. Ooh. So she still gives like um, the kidnapper still gives like hope to the parents. Um, I feel like I might have seen this. Um, it's so good. And then um, what also adds to it is the um, investigator into this, like the news reporter. She has her own shit that she's going through. She was raped and she was drugged and stuff like that. Jeez. So, yeah, so it's. It's not her story isn't as big as the kidnapping story, but it does get um yeah mentioned frequently. Trigger warning. Don't trigger warning, don't watch it. But it's a really good show. Yeah. Um Oh, it's a show. I haven't seen it then. So good though. I love foreign films on Netflix. I love well, I like foreign films. I love A twenty four. I've been obsessed with A twenty four for they years. A twenty four never misses. They and don't that new show beef. <gasps> greatest it's so good so funny it's so good ali wong yeah oh my god such 
a, she did such a good job. She played such they a good. They both did such a good she's job. She's such a cunt. She played it. Yeah, well, no, though. she did it so well. I oh believed her. God. She. I believe that she's a cunt now <laughs> <laughs> because of that show. Did you know that the guy? I didn't know this because I don't. Um, I'm not a big fan of Walking Dead, but he's the one who played Glenn. Yeah, Charles told me. Didn't know that. I found it out yeah. on um. YouTube has this series with Vanity Fair where um, celebrities go back to their timeline of like when they did movies and yeah, shows. Yeah, that's really cool. And yeah, so he, that's how I saw it from him. He did, he was Glenn in Walking Dead. And then he was the cowboy in Nope. I don't think I've seen Nope. You haven't seen I, Nope unironically, yet? Unironically, yeah, no. Okay, you need to watch nope. nope. Nope is a good movie. Okay. It was Jordan Peele, obviously, but yeah, still, it's a great seen. movie. You need to watch it. Um, But he's one of the main characters in Nope, and I didn't know hmm. this, but he looked familiar, and me... He did look super familiar, and then once I realized where he was from, I was like, oh... Yeah. And he can play that kind of role so well. He you played know, like, Psycho. And- psycho anger issues real fucking quick yes he did such a good job 24 has a bunch of stuff coming out have you watched the whale no i with brendan fraser oh my it's god great. it's so good it's amazing natalie told me that she cried mm-hmm. everyone cries he won an oscar for it yeah it was amazing bless him it was absolutely one I of the was, best movies i've seen this year i've heard that um not only did he do a good job but the girl from stranger things i heard she did a really good job too because she, she plays his daughter she did a really everybody in that movie did an impeccable job Fr- down from the costuming <gasps> everything was amazing so believable so lifelike mm-hmm. so just they're coming out with a lot a lot of stuff i found out a24 did spring breakers i didn't know that that's early back in the day but man. i didn't know that they know were the either. production company for that movie i the only reason why i know them is because remember that guy um Noah Centineo. He was in P.S. I Love You or um, To the Boys I Love Before. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, I believe, make um, make that movie in that series, but oh. they use him a lot in different um, in different shows. So like The Perfect Day on Netflix. So I know of A24 because of him. Like he's right. very incorporated in their um, productions. Casting. Yes, girl. But Beef, great show. Beef was so you good. You need to watch it. It's Beef hilarious. Hilarious. So it's very relatable. The way that they depict the various forms of depression is mm-hmm. so relatable. It shook me. And yep. I didn't like it was so good to the point where I didn't know Ali Wong's character was having some Going form of depression. depression. She's just having the backlash, or not backlash, the repercussions of being a child of immigrants. She wants to make better for her parents. She wants to right, do better. I right. thought she was just having You that thought it was just a part of, of her character kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I thought she just had like an, um, an incredible right. work ethic, a drive that was unspeakable. But no, no. like it's just a different form of hyper depression, I think it's yeah. called. High functioning. Hi, yeah, high functioning depression. And then um the um character danny like to me i thought he he's kind of like in the same boat where he's literally trying to provide a lifestyle for his parents literally and i didn't realize that it was how i realized it was depression in danny when that scene where he goes and he sits there and he calls that realtor over again and he's eating those four chicken <gasps> the, sandwiches um, from Burger King. Girl. And I saw that that's depression that everybody sees and they can equate to that depression. And I was like, oh. I didn't think it was depression. I thought he had an eating disorder. I thought he No, binged. I realized that he was overeating for co- to feel comfort. Oh, I didn't mm-hmm. associate that. I just knew that. That's like a comfort ritual thing that he does. That on top of the scene where he- The hibachi stoves. Could you imagine going out that way? <laughs> <laughs> and his brother's just like, what the fuck uh, are you doing? And he tries to return them and they won't let him return them. <laughs> I mean, receipt. what the The hell? receipt's right there. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> but literally, that's the event that causes this whole entire right. like, spiralization. Right. But not going to lie, Ali Wong's- boss or the person who she's trying to get to buy her her business, business? cunt cunt spoiler <laughs> warning the way she died <laughs> and how her new girlfriend or a fiance or gr- wife is watching her get that's crunched weird. in a door is literally cool. that's that's 824 they take it there split in half they take it there every time oh uh, but i what's the first 824 m- movie show that you watch perfect date mine was good times good times With robert that- pattinson Netflix is really good. Robert Pattinson, he's mm-hmm. such a good fucking actor. I've seen my favorite film of Robert Pattinson is Stand by Me. 
It's so fucking good. I don't think I've seen that. Girl, so this guy, it's with pa- Robert Pattinson. It's um have you seen the TV show Once Upon a Time on of ABC? Course. The girl who plays Belle. Okay. She's in it mm-hmm. and Pierce Bronsley. He's in it. Okay. He plays Robert Pattinson's um father. Robert Pattinson um comes from a rich family on the Upper East Side of New York and he's troubled. His older brother trigger warning commits suicide. And he was very close to his brother. So he's still struggling with his passing. He meets a police officer. He tries to defend, I believe it's a guy getting his ass beat in an alleyway, just a random flu. It comes to find out that Best Friends finds out that the police officer has a daughter who goes to the same school as the Bob Patterson character. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, the best friend talks him into dating her because he thinks it's going to be a fun prank on the police officer when he finds out that the guy you arrested is dating Dating your your daughter. daughter. Right. Of course, it goes farther into it. They get into a relationship and the truth ultimately comes out. But what I love about this um, character and his acting, he has a younger sister um, who he's very protective about. He doesn't fuck around with her not getting the alone time in the proper time with her father Mm -hmm. so when the father bails on like events because she's an artist um he gets really pissed off and his acting shows fucking range in this movie he's just a great fucking actor yeah i love robert pattinson like i fell in love with him not from twilight because he was really no from harry potter he didn't have the material in twilight no Neither in Harry he Potter. Was just supposed to, no, but in, he did a good job in Harry Potter. He was only there for a little bit. You kind but of forget about him. I never did. That's my favorite Harry Potter movie because That's of Cedric my Diggory. Least favorite. That's my favorite because my of Cedric. My favorite. Serious Black is Prisoner of Azkaban. My That's favorite. A good, That's a great one too. It's but great. the Goblet of Fire is just amazing. <sighs> it's so good. It the is. Goblet of Fire is so. It's the first Harry Potter movie that had that big. I remember when they the came leap. out that had that big production scale. The Sorcerer's Stone was like baby shit. I watched. I literally had that on VHS. That was like they it's didn't baby have. Shit. Yeah, th- that was the first one that was like. You is know, that Blu Ray? Like when it first came out, probably. probably. I started to like Robert Patterson in Water for Elephants with Reese Witherspoon great movie but you need to watch stand by me so i cry i'm not a crier i love reese witherspoon she i didn't cry in water for elephants correction it was not stand by me it was remember me but great movie great actor i feel like i've heard of that um you probably seen that sounds it. really familiar you've most likely seen it and this thing says it's a 26. Rotten Tomatoes don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You got to look at IMDb. That's the best. Rotten Tomatoes is... Trash. Mm-hmm. The ratings are never good. Oh, yeah. I remember that. You probably seen That's it. when he looked. Edward Cullen. He was looking real right. He's sexy. Anyways. But yes, like... Ooh. And then, of course, his Batman... Oh my god. Oh, oh god. my I saw that in theater. Oh my god, it was so Oh good. my god. This Batman storyline. What about the have you seen the sorry to interrupt, but have you seen the Flash trailer for the new no. Flash movie with the are new they Batman? Replacing him? No, with who? Batman? No, are they replacing that Flash? No, it's the same Flash. I'm pretty sure it's the same Flash. Hold They've on. been making this movie since 2009. What? Michael Keaton is Batman. Yo, is Michael this an alternate universe? Because they got Ben Affleck in this motherfucker. The trailer is amazing. That's all I have to say. Okay, so just because I'm seeing him and he's known for running fast, I'm assuming he's going into different time zones. I, I could tell you what's in the trailer. Tell me the trailer. I'm watch it Okay, anyways. so what's in the trailer is the whole Flash thing is he's going back in time before <sighs> his parents died, trying to save them. And Batman, you know, and him relate because mm-hmm. he never got, he tried his whole life. His parents, p- parents' de- death. Batman? Yeah. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, what. Yeah. That's the whole reason he became Batman. His parents died. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So. They link up. They link up. But also, didn't they also link up because of um, Supergirl's in it? Who the fuck is Supergirl? She's in the new Flash. Okay. Well, I'm about to find out. <laughs> oh, okay. So, no, no. Because they're in. Um, what? He's part of the Justice Assembly. Justice Justice League, that one, yes. So I'm not surprised about that part. Mm -hmm. But that Justice League, I don't know what's up with DC, but they never have a good like roster like Marvel does. And it could be because I think DC just got bought though, too. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers just bought them. 
I'm pretty oh, sure. And they're also the ones who made um, Harry Potter. So you already know. Mm-hmm. But they're also revamping DC. Yes. Um, they are. That's what I'm saying. They're revamping it. Okay. Be back. So I was right. James Gunn, the director of all three Guardians of the Galaxy, he's the one who's put oh, in charge yeah. to revamp DC mm-hmm. and basically fix their timeline because right. he's saying that the timeline's all types of fucked up, which it really fucking is. Because I ain't gonna lie. They have so many universes going on. The fact that they got two Flashes. They have two. One DC, one Marvel. One Flash was from Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. And then the other Flash is part of the Justice League. Right. So that one got me confused. I'm always confused. Facts. I'm going to be honest. I'm not the best when it comes to DC and Marvel movies. I have my favorites and I pay attention to those. Like I love Batman. I love Christopher, the Christopher Nolan ones. I love oh, Batman. Heath Ledger's Joker. I love now Batman. Walking Phoenix Walking Joker. Walking Phoenix is one of my favorites. You know, he's a part actors. two. Wait, they're coming with part they're two? They're coming with the part two. That's what I thought. And that's Lady why it's confusing Gaga. me with the... Yeah, they are. Lady but it's Gaga's con- Harley Quinn. Yeah, but it, that's why the new Batman movie or the new Flash with Batman is so confusing because I'm like, how many Batmans are there? I guess there's so many universes. And when anybody tries to explain it to me, I'm like, okay. My thing is, <laughs> what I know, because clearly Joaquin Phoenix, if you haven't seen Joker, you need to go see it. It's yeah. great. Great Walking movie. Phoenix is one of my favorite actors. Have He's a phenomenal actor. He's made. He was in one of my favorite movies. Walk the Line. Walk the Line is my all-time favorite movie. I, would assume. I love Johnny Cash. Uh, I don't. And Reese Witherspoon. I'm shocked <laughs> you like Johnny Cash. I love Johnny Cash. What do you mean? My grandfather's from Montana. I'm from. I grew up in uh, spending my summers in the country. How is that so <laughs> shocking? <laughs> she's. Let's I, just I'm say, complicated. Let's just I'm say she's com- very eclectic. This I'm very bitch eclectic. <laughs> introduced me to City Girls. That's why yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> my music taste is range. wide. I got range, honey. That's I was listening serious. to One Direction on the way here. My throw so on. context. <laughs> she listens to fucking Johnny Cash, but she introduced me to the City Girls. So two different spectrums. Spectrums right. of life, but she's she's a character. Oh my god! So yeah, that's the reason why I'm just shocked. I was like, "What the fuck?" Love Johnny Cash. Oh my god, love that movie. It's literally one of the best biopics ever. Him with Reese Witherspoon, um, playing the Ring June Carter. <laughs> that is, and they sing that whole movie. They're actually singing. Really, Walking Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon are singing live. I want like, to watch- They recorded everything and they sung it. I want to watch his movie for her. He has a movie called Her, and he is basically a very introverted um person. Oh, I have seen and that. And he has a relationship with a uh, AI, yeah. kind of like an mm-hmm. um an Alexa or whatever. Yep. He always takes it there. He's a method actor. I want to know though, like if in Joker two they're gonna try to tie him. Well, clearly it's gonna be with the Batman, but which Batman? Like which right. Batman that we know? What which is Batman? it gonna be the Michael Keaton Batman? Don't think so. Michael Keaton's too old. That's my just consensus. But remember, this is like back in the day too. Yeah, but Michael Keaton's old as hell now. I don't think they're. I don't, I don't think, think those stories have those it, parallels. But that's what I'm thinking. I don't think they're gonna bring him into the film, but like have him as reference, like as a I picture. I don't know if this Joker is like gonna have a Batman. That's I what I not. think. I don't think it's going to. I don't think this Joker is going to have a Batman. I love the background that they put on this Joker. His mom kind of like, they're like, it's they're perfect. dancing on the line of. He's she, an incel. She might like had a relationship with Mr. Wayne, but then. She didn't. She's mentally ill. He's like, oh. And then I that's what I think. I think that she's delusional. Or, you know, it could be I think some sick rich people shit where that's they did. That's what I'm saying. You're he right, abused you're her. Right, that's you're what right. I'm saying. He used her. You're right. And we're gonna learn relations. about the corruption of Bruce Wayne. They kind of touch on the corruption of Bruce Wayne in Robert Pattinson's Batman. They do. So they that's do. what I'm saying. Like I think she's not as crazy as people want her to think. I think he really did have like a relationship with her, Mr. Wayne, and he is he could be the product. Or um, she could have had multiple relationships and it's overlapping. She thinks that... Or she's mentally ill because he is also mentally ill. There's just various avenues. Yeah, that's why I love movies that make you think. Yes. Oh, my God. I love when a superhero movie does that. No offense. I felt no type of way when he shot those three motherfuckers in the subway. When he shot Robert De Niro's character. Yeah, I didn't feel any Y'all all deserved it. Right. Because you was pushing buttons. You were causing him to crack. He fucking cracked. That's the scary thing, though, too. When Mm -hmm. you have suggestive kids or teenagers that are watching that that can relate the same that we are and think that that's okay, though. It starts to get a little bit hairy. That's when movies start. You know what I mean? When when movies provoke those things out of you where it's like 
that's why Batman is su- such a problematic, problematic character. Yeah, exactly. Because literally, like, that's how I felt about, um, we're going to take this real left. Remember the movie John Q with Denzel? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't think I've seen it, though. Oh. John Q is Denzel. His son needs a heart transplant, but oh, the yeah. hospital won't put him on the list because he doesn't have, I think it's like $20,000. So he holds up a hospital and he tr- basically tries to get the surgeon, the um, heart surgeon, the cardiologist, let him kill himself, take his heart and give it to his son because mm-hmm. him and his son are the right match. Right. So then it opens up the debate where, okay, if we don't give in to him, he's going to kill everybody and we're going to have a shit fuck on our hands, the hospital's perspective. But then if we do cave into him, what are we telling we every family that needs their child to be put on the list that if you hold up a hospital, you're going to get your son on the, your kid on the list and you're, we're just going to throw hospital policy out the gate Mm -hmm. i can empathize with a person you don't want to see your kid die when you know someone else can help you know what i mean right so in those instances like but you have to have policy and procedure because in the world we're just run insanity like the insanity as it is today right so but you also could have money and do anything that you wanted to whatever do. Whatever the fuck you want. You could thus, get a heart on the black market. <laughs> thus, Batman, you got a vigilante who can do whatever the fuck he wants. Who's rich. Owns Gotham City. Let's be honest. Those movies just speak different volumes, yeah. different characters. It goes beyond just comic book shit. I literally used to... My dad has a movie theater upstairs. And I used to sit upstairs after school every single day and watch The Dark Knight. Green movie. And eat hot Cheetos. That's, That's Batman is like one of the best movies ever. To me, um, Christopher Nolan's Christopher Batman Nolan. trilogy was the thing to make me be relatable to Batman. He and was like the Batman. DC. He made me like Batman. Yeah. Just uh, and he Ledger. Girl, okay, we're off this hell? tangent, but why did we come here? So I don't Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. <laughs> That's what started it. I don't even know how we got to Robert Pattinson though either. Well, and good actors and good actors. Mm-hmm. How was Paris? Oh my god! So she, ooh. hey Denzel. <laughs> That's what Natalia calls my dad, yes. Denzel. <laughs> um, he took his whole entire family to Paris, yes. and I am now gonna let her speak because I want to live vicariously through you. How was it? So I've never been to Europe before. I've been to Asia before. I went to Japan. Mm-hmm. So I've gotten used to traveling abroad, but Europe is like so different. I'll tell you this. First thing I realized when I stepped off a plane and realized it was so different than America, I didn't see a single overweight person. No. Nope. Not a single person was overweight. No. Nope. First of all, Paris too, everybody is stylish. It sparked like a new sense of fashion in me going there because mm-hmm. everybody is so in their everyday life dressed to the nines. Yeah. You know how in America we'll buy a cheap pair of shoes just to wear for the weekend? Everything has an, is important in their closet and is going to last. Yes. Which is why they're one of the... Um, fashion house fashion leading capitals. fashion capitals yeah mm-hmm. exactly the first thing we did we went and we got food at this like really basic french fo- food that you would have like escargot and like steak i love escargot. is that your first time oh, okay. no 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 i've had escargot Where? a plethora here? of times yeah here on cruises in the us of a yeah there's a french restaurant in downtown orlando Ooh. it's really good we have to it's fancy the most fanciest thing that i've eaten caviar and it was nasty. Oh, I like caviar. Caviar is disgusting. On a little but pancake with the this creme bitch, fraiche. Mm. Her palate is on some other level. Yeah, like, I, I'll try any food once. I love experiencing new food. I love food. It's like one of my, I don't know, my hobby. I love cooking. I love eating at new restaurants. Your pleasure. Your it's guilty my, pleasure. It is my pleasure. I could never be it. I'm literally, where's I'll the chicken at? I'll try anything once. She's seen me try some crazy stuff probably. I'll try anything one time. So You introduced me to hot sake and it tasted disgusting. Oh, I like hot sake. Especially when it's on sale. Like on a special. That's I think why I got it that one time. Yeah, because I think it was at like Izzy Bon or Itchy Bon, whatever Izzy you want to call it. So we went and we got food. The second day we went to the Louvre. And I mean, I tracked 20,000 steps that day. I was moving. I was all the way downstairs in the basement looking at the Israeli art. I went, I went to school for fine arts. So I was in that bitch <laughs> for lack of a better word how was the mona lisa did you know it's so small really it's like this big and everybody's just surrounding it and you kind of just feel like 
in that moment, like we're not going to pay attention to any else of this beautiful art. Like there's one line for the Mona Lisa and it's huge. It's wrapped around. And it's really and far there's, as fuck. There's literally a huge building filled of so much other art. And I'm like, okay, I got it done. Now let me go look at everything else. Like the sarcophaguses. Ooh. Like I said, the Israeli art, like I was looking at all the tile and the fabric and all that stuff like that. I was looking at all the French art, the American art. It was really an experience. And then this is fucked up. We were supposed to... <laughs> We were supposed to go on a dinner cruise. We're all running in the cold. <laughs> None of this. We're all like trying to speak to everybody in French and we can't like, we missed the cruise. Damn. So then my dad, so he's just being a typical American and he's like, what do you mean we missed the cruise? Like, you know what oh, I mean? He's been Confront- entitled. And confronting them, you know, and he gets us to be booked for the next day's cruise. I'm so glad we didn't miss that cruise because it was near the Eiffel Tower at night Ooh. along the river. You got to see the Eiffel Tower ahead of you lit up. I also went to the Eiffel Tower, which was beautiful too. Oh, um, I'm jealous. And I got to eat frog escargot tarts, sea bass. Macarons. N- no, a Nutella like like cake it was and we had like bottles of wine and fresh bread the bread was incredible cheese i mean everything you could want we did Mm. and then we went on a champagne tour that was my favorite part of the trip we went to champagne france i was supposed to have a bottle with me today but somebody left it i I left it (laughs) but we have bottles of rosé from literally champagne france we had a sommelier who was like a a special sommelier she wasn't a normal sommelier she had gone to done the program for eight years she was like an extra special sommelier she really helps them in champagne france curate the grapes she's been living there her whole life her grandfather her father her brother grow grapes it was and she took us on a tour of all of her favorite champagne places and it was just that was the peak of the trip for me because i was like not everybody gets to experience these moments in life. Like I felt mm-hmm. very blessed and really lucky to be experiencing that, not only with my family, but just to have those kind of experiences. And, you know, next year we're going to Italy and we're so excited. We're going to the Mafi Coast. That's the main reason why I want to leave the U.S. and move to Europe, to UK specifically. Because you can get anywhere. That's- oh, I got a Louis wallet too in Paris. My first Louis. If you're going to Paris and you're not going to Louis, what the fuck are you trying to do here? If you're not getting designer there, if you're not getting designer in Europe, you're fucking up because it's so much cheaper. Mm-hmm, exactly. So, you don't have to pay taxes. And they did they give you champagne? They gave us champagne. And my sister got the guy's number. <gasps> our, our, the guy who... Um, worked at Louis who helped us get all our stuff. Yeah. Your sister's trying to patent something. Trying to listen here, boo. The other day when we were at the <laughs> trade show, she got some guy's number. The plant guy. I'm like, she's trying, what to, have the some, she's trying to have some connections. She be having connects. She's like, listen here, bitch. I'm about to call you in a like few and we're about to pass Liter- some shit. Literally. When I'm back in Paris. I'm jealous. Oh my God. I'm just going to bite the bullet one day, get a card, and I'm just going to go to the UK and spend three weeks over there and call it a fucking day. It wasn't that expensive. We went right before the on season. And a lot of people have told me that Paris is dirty and I didn't get that experience because it was the off season. I feel like it's better to travel to some countries on the off season. It's not touristy. It's yeah. so much cheaper. The only place I wouldn't travel in the off season is Greece because Greece literally paints the streets every summer to look white. Mm-hmm. And it, you would just be looking at trash, basically, if you came I'm there. Not, it wouldn't look like how Greece looks to like how you see in pictures. I'm not as like informed in the politics in France, but I did see on TikTok that there were like a couple of riots at the airport and things like that. There were um, protests when I was there. Okay. They're trying to change the retirement age from 60, I think, to 65. And the people in France don't play. Oh, no. They do not play about their time off, we are retiring at 60. It's been that way forever. We are retiring. That's what it was about. When you were speaking about, like, your father going American on them, I was just thinking in my head, like, these these French people do not give a fine fuck. They were really nice, though, because they... That's what I'll say. That's another thing that I don't understand. People say the French people are mean. They are not mean. They are oh, no, no, so no, 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 no. nice. They are. like They I are re- so nice. I, and I didn't get pock, pick, pickpocketed or any of that shit. All the um, shit that people the were saying The place that you have happen. to look at is Rome, though. Because when right. I was in fourth grade, my mom had a good job and stuff like that. And for my sister's Ginse, we went to Europe. And we spent a month <gasps> over there. You did? I didn't know that. Yes. What, girl? Honey, what? Girl. Girl, we went to Italy, spent two weeks in Italy. Shut the we fuck went to up. Venice, Rome, Florence. What? And oh, 
Fourth grade. You never told me this. Girl, because that's where you fell in love with wanting to live in Europe. Oh, yes. Like, I forgot about it. Oh, okay. And then the last two weeks, we were in Spain. And I didn't really go to Spain. Wow, that's an incredible trip, though. Oh, my God. So That's like a a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Yes. People in Europe, I don't know why y'all people say they're rude. I have a photo. So me and my family, we were on a long ass layover in the Netherlands. So we were in um, Amsterdam. We were chilling. We, of course, know that you can smoke legally over there. And I think at the age, it's at that time, because this was 04, it was 18. So my brother, this is how I know that they're fucking bougie. They don't play about their weed have a list a menu of all the different grades all the different brands like so they were california before california was california (laughs) honey (laughs) they ordered the joint it came in an acrylic box it was so nicely service (laughs) that's service i know somebody i won't say who they are who went to amsterdam and got a bunch of mushrooms and brought them back to america different different tier different tiers and they, they can microdose and just like it treats their anxiety it was a wonderful experience. So then we're walking. We're heading back to the airport. This is where I got my first baby fats. Ooh, she's a fashionista, girl. And we wanted to take a picture. I don't know what where we were taking a picture at. We were taking mm-hmm. a picture in front of a, just a random bar. Right. And these two gentlemen just hopped in the photo and they were like, hey. And we took a yeah, picture with them. Everybody is so nice. They're in really nice. They are so... If you're... Not an asshole. Like, I feel like that's what it is. If you're an, an entitled asshole, which you shouldn't be anyways in any degree I in your life. I get people like that. Like, why are you going why to- Why are you going to another country- co- And being an And acting entitled like it's going to be like fucking Texas or New York. You're like, in Paris. It's different. I don't act like Paris is Orlando, Florida. Hell no. It's different. I'm not going to have the same expectations or the I same- I would never- I left Florida for this experience, but to go It's like back- the kind of people that like you order a drink and there's no ice in their drink. Like, that's the kind of stuff that like, you know, it's like, it's let kinda, it go. You're in a different country. It's people who just like- You're in a different country. They think just because they bought a ticket to Disney that they own fucking Disney World. Right. Calm down, lady. You don't. To go back to the point of um, Europeans and French people were so nice. We um, had a layover in France as well, and we went walking around. And this lady, she was a student. Um, and oh, so you've she, been to Paris? Oh, you've yeah. been to France? Yeah, but it wasn't an a actual day event. It was like a couple of hours. That's so we still, really didn't see much. I count that. Um, I do too, but I can't remember anything other than like majority of the time the airport. But we were over there and this one student, she took us around everywhere. For the three hours that we were there, she just took out of her day. Oh, are you guys here? Let's walk around. And we ate croissants. <gasps> the croissants. I went to the number one bakery in Paris that had been rated with the, with the best croissants for that year. Buttery. Bitch, they, first of all, they were $1.50. <gasps> best croissants I've ever had in my life. Starbucks could never. Starbucks is <laughs> compared to... And then we, I had a vegan croissant. I ate so much stuff. I ate every morning. I was going to the patisserie, I think is what it's called, and getting a coffee and a croissant. A cafecito. And I got beignets too. Because you know beignets are French. Yes. I, I got didn't. beignets. There's a Popeyes. Pa- France just got a Popeyes when I got there. And the line was wrapped around. They were like, what's up with this Louisiana yeah, shit? Exactly. But no, like people in Europe, from what I remember, and I only know one person, my little Brit, hi, Stuart. They're real nice. They're funny. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand people. I feel like the people who say Europeans are rude are the Karens of America. Right. So go fuck yourself. We had so much fun. I can't wait to go to Italy next year. I already know what my thing is going to be in Italy that I'm going to buy. I'm going to get a bag. A bag bag? Yeah, I'm going to get a bag instead of just getting a wallet. No, I'm probably... Who's in Italy? What is it? Gucci. Fendi. Mm -hmm. But I think it's Fendi. You didn't get Chanel? No. Girl, Chanel money where? I got Louis money. I ain't got Chanel (laughs) money, honey. And plus, Chanel, (laughs) they styled the Nazis, so we don't do that. Yeah, I got Louis money. I got... But I want to get a... I have a Fendi keychain. I want to get a Fendi bag. I think that that's Italy. I think Fendi's Italy. Yeah, so Fendi. That's what yes. I'm... I, I think Fendi is going to be the bag that I'm going to buy in Italy. Either that or Prada. Valentino, I think, is also Italian. Yeah, that's Valentino. I would buy a Valentino dress, but I don't think I'd buy a Valentino bag. Or shoes. Mm. Shoes are my thing. Purses are my thing. Purses and jewelry. I'm not that... That's not me. I I'm, love... I like furniture. I like... <laughs> Child, what? He's expensive as fucking. No, I could live on a a mattress, but have be surrounded by all my purses. 
<laughs> We'd like, be good. You'd be in Kylie Jenner's closet. Like, <laughs> look at all these Birkins. <laughs> Literally, when I see one on the street, I'm like, mom, mom, that's a, that's a Birkin. <laughs> I point out bags to my mom all the time. I want a Goyard bag right now. A who? You've seen the print. You've definitely seen Goyard. We need to go back to the vintage because I'm starting to miss the girl. <gasps> I miss her too. <laughs> I got my good bag. My Nine West like vintage 90s bag from her for like 10 bucks. And it was, it's gorgeous. Hit up your vintage stores, guys. They got She gold. does re, reworked product jewelry. Yes. Like this girl that we're Love speaking her. about. I will pop her store right over here. She's amazing. She takes design her logos from um, old bags and she turns them into earrings, necklaces, yeah. bracelets. And really cool. there's one that I love. It's the Prada logo and it's a necklace. Love it. It's That's so my next cute. buy. Oh, this is Goyard. Mm. It's it's a cool print, isn't it? It is. It's cute. Yeah. Chanel's 10,000. Hermes is like 10,000. Goyard's like 2,000. Louis Vuitton's like 2,000. See, this is how I know I'm broke. Sway. 50 bucks <laughs> is too much for me. Steve Madden be pushing it, okay? I love Steve Madden. <laughs> He's a I'm a Marshalls TJ Maxx girly for You're clothes. A Maxinista. I'm a Maxinista for clothes and like shoes and stuff like that. And I got a pair of Steve Madden shoes for Emily's wedding from there, mm. from TJ Maxx that are I so like, cute. I love TJ Maxx, Marshalls. They're they're legit. And Target. <sighs> love Target. Problematic. I love Target. It. Okay, so I have uh, Am I the Asshole for you? Okay. But before we do the Am I the Assholes, introducing a new segment. (laughs) The new segment will be Karen did what? What? You already know by the name. We've, of course, worked customer service jobs Definitely. like a lot of you. Mm-hmm. We got Karen stories for days. And we're just going to share our trauma stories in customer service. I asked on Instagram and I had a couple submissions. One of them that stood out to me, I feel like you were in it. It was from one of our friends mm-hmm. who works Starbies. Yeah. And she said that back when she was working at that store... Um, there would be this lady who would consistently have a problem with her drink just to get something for free. Oh, always. It just makes no sense. Always. That's the gag. That's the game that they play. There's something wrong with my drink because Starbucks used to have this. Now that I'm not working there anymore, I got all the tea for you. I don't care. I'm not going to lose my them. employment. Um, they had this policy for a long time where if an, an, a customer had any issue, you just replace their drink. So people got used to that mentality they and thought- it though? Yes. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> Starbucks is now tea for the podcast that nobody knows about. Starbucks is about to be charging for light ice, (gasps) no water, (gasps) no ice, extra juice, extra. Yeah, it's about to be an upcharge. Are they hurting? uh, They don't. (laughs) Are they hurting? They're understaffing the stores because they're paying their employees more and they're just a greedy company. Isn't Starbucks unionized though? It's store by store basis. Oh shit. I remember. Can we talk about how I worked there for nine years and I left making $17 an hour? That's not even what I make now. Right. That's not what I make now in my other two jobs. My other jobs, I've gotten pay increases for working there for less than a year, more than Starbucks. My job does not do that. My job hates people in general. Like, But Starbucks, I'm not surprised though. Because to me, when I think of Starbucks, I don't think of Starbucks as being... But they um, pretend to be that all-inclusive, oh, yeah, yeah. forward company. They're not. And they're not. They're McDonald's with a green logo. New drinks for the summer. You're getting the tea on Natalia's podcast because this is unreleased <laughs> from Starbucks. Macadamia nut cold brew. And then we also have like... It's like almost like a thin mint frappuccino. It's like a white chocolate mint frappuccino. It has its own syrup and it tastes like Andy's candies like you get from Olive Garden. Mm -hmm. It's so good. That one is crack. Those are the two new summer drinks. They haven't come out yet? No. You're getting it first here. Ew. Line up, bitch. (laughs) It's going to be your red cup day. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, so Karen did what? (laughs) I remember and I think you were there. Oh, you were there. (laughs) What? It was me and Eric. So um, at the Starbucks store that she used to work at, um, when you enter into the store, there used to be a um, bar area where you can sit at. And that's literally where me and um, our best friend would sit at so we can talk to our coworkers. Literally. Our coworkers. Our fr- 
Well, they were the chosen coworkers. Of They're the time, my like. coworkers. <laughs> I didn't the time was there. basically working there <laughs> without working there. Literally, I knew everybody, mm-hmm. and they knew me. So they would often hook me up with drinks. I used um, to always hook you up with food. I loved when Emily would close because <gasps> she would, would give, give you everything. everything. I love Emily. Guys, we have this. Do you want this? It's about to be thrown away. Send it to yeah. me, bitch. That's how it should be. Now we finally don't start donating to women's shelters and stuff like that. Which, But for a long time, we were just throwing stuff away. Yeah, everything. So then my friend would be like, we have this coffee bean or this coffee cake leaving. Do you want it? Give me the coffee cake. Give me cake the pots, banana. Chocolate croissant great so one day it's me and eric we're sitting at the bar and we're talking to our friend emily who's the night shift and um lauren is probably doing a drink or something like that Mm -hmm. out of nowhere the lights shut (gasps) down oh yeah i forgot about that (laughs) it was nighttime okay so we're not the right ones to be around because we're gonna be saying we're gonna die we're about to get murdered that's who we are so we're just like oh shit bitch i think it's about time we fucking go so we might shoot up the place i don't know what's (laughs) going on so Emily is just like, what the fuck is going on? She goes out and she tells us, because we didn't go out with her because you got me fucked up. I'm not dying. She's like, guess who turned off the lights? Oh my and God. then we're just like, what happened? It was an old man in a, a wheelchair. wheelchair this homeless guy <laughs> that like used to come in. And I guess somebody a couple days before had told him like, you can't be, you know, asking people for money loitering. or stuff like that. Loitering, mm-hmm. which I don't give a fuck. Get, get what you got to get, whatever you got to get it. I don't care. But Starbucks is a piece of shit. So, you know, we got to tell them you can't be in here. You can't loiter. Yeah. Um, if you're not going to buy a drink, you can't And he here. retaliated by turning off the power. In the middle of a rainstorm, because I remember this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I get to go home. <laughs> and then it came back on and I was like, oh, their frig. generator came back on like back up. And I was just shook. Yep. I was just like, he what? turned off all the power for the, like the whole strip of our plaza. Yeah. He there was a barbecue restaurant. For whatever reason, T-Mobile. their breakers don't have locks on it. So this motherfucker was like, you fucking thought. And he shut it down. He shut it down. <laughs> and he rolled away. On his wheelchair. <laughs> and Emily was not, she's not Captain Save a She's not going to run after no, you. No, she was just, just like, like fucking. She started laughing. Okay, whatever. She turned off the um, mobile order machine. She's like, fuck this shit. Yeah, I wish we, we can't do that anymore. You have to contact your district manager. <laughs> fuck that. She was not about it. She especially was not late about at that night. Life. Like no. when it was really busy. She's like, I'm turning off the mobile order. I'm exactly. not doing this shit. Oh my God. Those times were amazing pre COVID. Pre COVID, pre everything, we used to get the craziest people. I have a story. This isn't really a Karen story, but it's definitely like a workplace, you know, situation. Uh-huh. So there was this guy who worked at the barbecue score store down mm-hmm. like two Dickies. Yeah, sh- shops down from like our Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And he had a crush on me. Ooh. He would always bring me barbecue and like a chicken Caesar salad because they used to smoke their chicken and then they would put it on the ch- Caesar salad. And it was so Ooh. good. And so he had a crush on me, but I guess this is sad. He relapsed from alcohol and he got fucked up and I guess he got fired from that job and he came back to retaliate and they kicked him out. So he came over to our Starbucks and because he had a crush on me, I was taking out the trash and he tried to hump me from behind (gasps) while I was working. And I was like 19, 20. He's probably like 25 or something. I'm like, oh my God, sir. (laughs) (laughs) He's like fucked up, like really drunk, like going through it. is never funny. No, it's not. Oh my God. God, that is one of my like most traumatizing work experience moments. I remember I clicked to my manager. I was like, what's his name's being a little weird. It was Manda. And she was like, come back inside. And I remember I was just like, I'm a very empathetic person. So I was like, I feel feel bad for him and whatever he's going through that trumped more of like the experience of me feeling violated. It was inside the building. I wasn't outside. I was changing the trash in the lobby. What the fuck? And he came up behind me and started like, yeah. It was in broad daylight inside the lobby. There were customers around that were like, what is going on? And nobody helped you? No. That was the most parallel part for me. Paralyzed, whatever it is. Paralyzing? Paralyzing part for me is that nobody did anything. What the fuck? There's like a guy left of me working on his computer. Oh my God. Starbucks is fucking wild. Wild. For my Karen, I used to work as a front desk reception at a hotel. Horrible job. Treat people nicely. Have your fucking IDs ready. Stop being a twat. There was this couple. They drove in from South Carolina somewhere close, driving distance. Mm-hmm. During that time, my hotel was going through a renovation. So it was looking real shambly. Right. And we were just 
very discombobulated. So um, my coworker at the time, who was the MOD manager on duty, she was checking in the wife. And I was just there looking at how many more people we have left to check in. Right. I overhear, oh, can I see your ID? Oh, I don't have my ID. Just check me in. It's under my husband's name. Can't do that. Nope. He's just like, okay, well, I'm going to need to see his ID because if it's listed under his name, I don't see an additional adult. You have, to, to check you have in. to add somebody else's name. I travel with my dad all the time for work. So. Exactly. So if you're dumb and you just don't know this, if you have your wife checking in, but you're using your membership, add you her have to as add an somebody adult else's name so she can check in without having to bother you. Right. Easy peasy. Otherwise, simple. you're going to have to be there. Exactly. Or, or you're going to have to fax over a paperwork. Exactly. And if you're nowhere to be seen, we just might have to cancel that reservation and open up a new one at rack rate, a.k.a. But the whatever's nice listed is, there. is that they do let you fax paperwork if you do... Depending on the location. Marriott's do. Hilton won't let you do that. So she's just like, well, he doesn't have his ID neither. Girl, Which I what? find it really hard to believe if you're driving from Carajo land and yet ask you or your husband ain't got no damn ID. Farfetch, whatever. So she's just like, this is ridiculous. You guys are stealing my money. And on top of that, they're third party. They're Expedia. My thing was just like, if you book with Hilton, we can modify any type of reservation you want to do. If you want to upgrade your room, cool, we got that. If you want to downgrade your room, cool, we got that. But it's going to be whatever the rate it is. If you do it through Expedia, price, like any third party, we can't fuck with it because you're fucking up their money and they have a contract with our property. Mm -hmm. So we can't touch that bill, that nothing. So when she was just like, oh, you're stealing my money. I already paid for this room. You need to check me in or I'm going to call the police to my coworker. My coworker was just like, ma'am, it's hotel policy that we need to check your ID to make sure you are who you are, A, because on top of that, us checking you in is fraud because we're charging that card, that name. Right. We need to know who you the fuck you are. So she was just like, I'm going to get my husband. This is ridiculous. Two seconds come by. The dude's locked and loaded. He got his minivan out here waiting. He's like, I hear you don't want to check in my wife. This is bullshit. Um, you guys are stealing our money. If you don't, I'm going to call the police. And, I'm, and I step in because she's kind of new. She's kind of slow. And I'm like, sir, like we told your wife, you need to show us your ID. If you don't show us your ID, we can't check you in due to privacy and through to and due to law. And he was just like, no, that's bullshit. I don't have my ID. We left it at home. And Who I drive without I their get, ID. Exactly. I get mad stupid with him. I'm like, so you drove two states over without an ID? How dumb is that? And he was like, I want to speak to your manager. She's not here right now. So, sir, if you want to show us any type of paperwork, feel free. But if you don't, you're going to need to leave the property. Because at this moment, you're trying to get legal involved because he was talking about suing us and all that stuff. And we can no longer speak with you. Mm -hmm. So he leaves. And then the wife comes in with her camera, waving it in our faces. And I'm like, I don't consent to be recorded. I don't consent you taking my picture. You need to pull it down. And she's just in my face, in my face. And I'm like, I'm going to call the cops for you since you have an issue. Right. We call the police. Police comes over. Police is just like, what the fuck do you want me to do? I'm like, tell the people to get the fuck off the property. What you mean? So she's yelling at the police officer and it's a female. And the police officer is like, what you're not going to do is yell at me. You need to simmer your voice. Because if not, I will take you in right now. And you ain't got an ID. So you need to shut the yeah. fuck up. So she's just like, oh, they're here trying to steal our money. I booked a room and they're not letting me check in. And then she looks at me. She's like, so what's going on? I'm like, like she said, she doesn't have an ID. Our hotel policies, you need to have an ID. We need to check in. We need to have a credit card on file. If you don't have any of that stuff, you can't stay with us. Right. And I've already told her because she booked it through Expedia, you need to call Expedia to see what they can do for you, move you to another property that doesn't require identification and take care of it. But I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm not canceling the room i'm not giving you any type of refund you need to call expedia and then the police officer's like you heard what she said exactly what they say then they were mad at the police officer for not making us check them in and she's just like ma'am this is hotel policy i don't know what you want us to do about right. it but we're you're not now gonna break policy for you and exactly like hope like 
police can't make no they a can't hotel just change shit. they can't just change policy at a business exactly we so, would have no america <laughs> We're on that slope now, but who right. gives a shit? Get the fuck off now. You're breaking the law because I'm asking you as a worker to get off property. Right. You no longer have a reservation here. You no longer are welcome. You need to bunk the fuck out. So she was just like, the lady was absurd. She was like, oh my God, this is how you're going to treat us. We're customers. Customers always right. Fuck no, you. bitch. No, you're not. No, bitch. Especially not when you're throwing a camera in my face. Exactly. Like in what world? And that was the time and place I knew I was not getting paid enough for this fucking job. Right. They leave, but um, the police officer sticks around later on because she was like, I want to make sure that they don't try, try to like, scroll back around. So I'm just going to be in the parking lot. I'm like, all right, Sway, say less. You need water? I got you. We got a Kit Kat. You need mm-hmm. a Kit Kat? I got you. But that was my Karen experience. I have way more stories. Let me know if you want to hear more. <laughs> all right. Before we wrap this bitch up, we are going to do am, am I the asshole? All right. Drink, drink. I like how you're drinking water from my beautiful cup. Mm-hmm. These are cute. That's why. Ikea. I love drinking water from a cup rather than a bottle. It goes down smoother. <laughs> why is that so funny? <laughs> it's so true. It's so it's much good. easier to drink cup. Uh, like It's so much easier to drink water out of a cup or with a straw than it is through a bottle. You can drink so much more. It goes so smooth. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Watch this. I could chug this where it would take me longer to chug that. I don't know if it's centrifugal force or something. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you guys try it at home. How much faster can you chug a bottle of water with a straw and slash a cup versus a bottle? Test it out. And send your theories to... Or just submit it to the podcast, Two Drinks and Teens. Yeah, or submit it there. going to get to the um, Am I the Asshole, the title. Am I the asshole for kicking out my boyfriend's daughters who I just met? Um, yes, you are the asshole, right? We're going to see. I, 36 female, started dating John, 40 male. Eight months ago, and he recently moved in with me into the home I inherited seven, several years ago. John is black and I am mixed, Native American and black. John has two daughters, 21-year-old Jackie, 25-year-old Nina. I took after my dad fully and I have a very strong Native American features outside of my hair. This is what started the problem, I guess. John's daughter knew of me, but only knew my name and about us living together in our home. They haven't seen their father in years because they live out of state, but their father wanted them to meet me and planned for two months to get them out here, which included me paying for most of their airfare. I make substantially more than John. I want to stay with us as my home is four bedrooms. I had to work when they got in, so their dad picked them up, and I was due home a few hours later. I walked into my home, and at first, the girls were nice and shook my hand and whatever, but as soon as I took my hat off and they saw my braids, all hell broke loose with Jackie, the 21-year-old. She says something like, Oh, hell nah. You didn't just walk into my daddy's home for the first time meeting us and already insulting us with your cultural appropriation bullshit. I was definitely quite taken aback, but I didn't really know how to respond either. So I just stood there and stared. (laughs) John was in the back barbecuing and didn't hear this. So she looked at me and goes, do you have anything to say for yourself? Like, what is this shit? And flips my braids. At this point, Nina is just standing back with her arms crossed and eyebrows raised, glaring at me as well. So I felt extremely concerned. I just walked past them to go to John because I didn't know what to do. And they followed me and started going off on John about how disrespecting their, um, how about me disrespecting their heritage. John didn't even correct them or anything. He just looked at my hair and shrugged, saying he thought it was nice. I was flabbergasted. 
Okay, so I will pretense my answer by saying I'm mixed. I'm not 100% black, so my opinions are not the Like, I won't pretend to know, to have the right opinions about things like this. Mm -hmm. I'll pretense that by saying this. I, You know, I'm not 100% black, so I don't feel things the same way or understand things the same way. So my opinion might not be... I'm always learning, even too, being black. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... I would say who gives a fuck? Cool. I don't care if somebody... I had braids growing up my whole life. I had cornrows and stuff like that. I've had sew-ins. If you want to fuck your... It, I'm, it, she's black, so who cares? Like, if I had braids and you told me that I couldn't have braids, I'd look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. Even if you weren't black, who cares? If you want to fuck your hair up... <laughs> By doing a protective style that your hair probably shouldn't have, then that's on you. I don't care if you want to have knotless braids or you want to get a sewing. It doesn't bother me specifically. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. really doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. That stuff never offends me. Yeah. It doesn't. It's it's hair. It's life. Who cares? Tell somebody who's black that they can't do something that is for their hair. My hair is completely mixed. We're not finished yet. That's my tidbit. Okay. <laughs> I was flabbergasted. I said something like, I'm mixed, part black and part Native American. Both cultures have braids. And this is my fucking house. And now you both can leave. Nina started protesting and saying, why didn't you just say that? Like, use your words. But Jackie was calling me a liar. John was saying that we all needed to calm down. So I said again, get the fuck out. They did eventually, after losing their shit, about them suppose supposedly staying here and having no money for a hotel. John is saying I ruined his chance at reconnecting with his daughters and that I made them leave. Am I the asshole? No. I'm so fucking lost right now. John should have stood up. Facts. John should have been a man and told his daughters to shut up. And he should have talked to them about it privately. And he should have... I understand that these are his children that he hasn't raised. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? So it's a little bit different. If you raised your children, you would know that they would say inappropriate things like that to people. When you don't raise your kids, you have kid gloves on with them. Because you already know you're kind of in the wrong and you're making up for something. Right, right, right. So... But he's in the wrong. He He is the one that should have stood up and been like... Either said, you know, she's mixed or shut the fuck up. It's not that big of a deal. You're in somebody's house. At that point... It's not even that you need to correct your fucking daughter because she just you went on a tag. Anybody rain. that says something to me like that, true. You and should correct this is anybody my house. for assuming, and that's why you don't fucking assume. Because now look at Nina and look at Jackie. That's looking why like you assholes. just shouldn't care. Ooh. Oh, for facts. That's why it shouldn't matter. For facts, it's because I understand it in the fact that a lot of other cultures have cultural appropriated things from African Americans and now have given them credit fashion makeup hair and i think that's what and i it's slang and i think that's what it stems from music Mm -hmm. i think that's what it stems from being so um fed up with people taking from you and not giving you credit and um i don't think hair is that big of a deal it's not you know i think all those other things are far more of a big deal but then again but i understand the frustration and if you're frustrated about i'm not going to take that away from you that's how you feel but also it's just like Again, back to what Lauren was saying, like, it doesn't really matter of doesn't your matter. hair because at the end of the day, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, exactly. As long and as you it should be able me. to do whatever the fuck you want to do. It's you get one life. If you want to have braids in your hair, I'm not going to tell you that you shouldn't. Somebody else's appearance really shouldn't affect you this so much. This is why you need to mind your fucking business. Right. Exactly. Because now you're fucking homeless. You look like an idiot. Laying and then you're mad. God knows where. First of all, if you're traveling, you should always have a backup plan. I went to California. Shit got fucked up, <laughs> and I realized, damn, I didn't want to be where I was staying anymore. Always been an importance to me that I always have enough for every days that I'm staying in a hotel or staying at somebody's house. I always have enough money in my account that would cover me having to stay somewhere else. Yeah, you because, always have to have a backup because you don't want to be stuck at some. Rinky crusty dink. guy's house rinky dink or hang out with some crusty friends somebody finesses you and takes your money and you're living in a homeless shelter now yeah in california waiting for your flight that didn't happen to me that's not what i'm saying i was staying with a friend <laughs> i was just saying like what could happen i've never stayed at a homeless shelter i i mean if you did i'm not saying but i'm just saying like don't, that's how far <laughs> left it could go really fast it's it could giving- be out in the tent it's giving asking for a friend but it really not <laughs> wasn't me it didn't happen to me i'm just saying could happen you could be on the street with the tent if you don't got a couple extra hundred bucks in your bank account you could be in the airport terminal sleeping. terminal sleeping trying to get a flight back 
Sure. Ain't got money for that either. So you got to wait until your return flight. Just you saying. sleep in that rental car you fucking got if you got one. Girl. But they taking Ubers. They ain't got no rental car. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> but also in general, common sense, or at least house training, you are in someone else's house, whether it's your daddy's house, as she was saying our house she was being kind enough to and it include, wasn't their house it was it was her house but she was saying our house you need to act accordingly if you do want to say something you feel the need to say something hold back your fucking tongue be and somebody to your daddy separately but now you over here showing your ass you got no place to fucking stay because the person who owns this goddamn house kicked you out because you wanted to be mad disrespectful your daddy's a bum in this instance, because you just be like, Jackie, you need to calm the fuck down. She's African-American and she's Native American. And even if she Slow wasn't, do you need to teach your daughters a lesson that you don't talk to people like that? Again, no house fucking training. Being in somebody's house is like being in a mini country. You abide by their rules and their expectations while you're in their house. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do what I would do at my own house in Italy's house. My house is a mess. Hers is not. Things are different. Because <laughs> lives are different. Mm-hmm. You just need to act accordingly. Exactly. Girl, mess. Mess. Well, on that note, not the asshole, sis. You're perfectly fine. Jackie, Nina, John, bums, all you. All y'all. Fuckers. Oh, I didn't say it because I was so excited or whatever. Um, Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you are in the loop whenever I put out new content. And for all the audio listeners, please feel free and say, Hardly suggested. Go to anywhere you get your podcast, subscribe, follow, whatever that looks like for you, and make sure you're always here for it because we got more shenanigans. I'll be back again. She will. I'll be back, guys. Dos <laughs> Bye. <laughs>